uh, Java EE server, and then you get your productions guys and say, well, now I want to run this Java EE application server. What is that? Well, no, it's similar to Java, isn't it? You know, it starts the Java VM, but it has an application on top of it. Well, okay, so it's similar to Java. I know how to start, I know how to stop. I know how to do backup. I can do this. That's fine. And then you say, well, you know what? I have this application here, PHP, aren't you? Are you working with PHP? Yeah, so you know, I have this application here, PHP. Well, PHP, how do I do this? Well, PHP is Apache, right? Just run an Apache. Oh, I know how to do Apache. I can do that. Okay, good. So then Ian Shasser right there, he says, well, you know, guys, you really should use this, this uh, Redmine issue tracker system. It's pretty good. It's written in Ruby. So you go to the production guys. Well, I'm just going to use this Ruby application. Go, no, no, no. Stop with that. You know, I had to learn uh, Java. I had to learn Java E. I had to learn uh, uh, Apache and PHP. I'm not doing Ruby. No, 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 no. I'm not doing Ruby here, right? You know, I will stop all this nonsense. You developers, you're crazy. You're my worst enemy. You keep changing things all the time. I'm just gonna, now, now we're going to define here. In this company, we're only going to use, you know, on WebSphere application server running Java 1.2, right? And that's it. No more things. And then you got stuck. You can't do anything else because now you piss it off your production guys because they, they, they're not supposed to keep up with all these. Right? You know, it's very manual process. It's very, you know, it's very time consuming to keep all those stuff running everything. So what's the solution to this? Containers, right? So what do you do? You get your Java application put inside a container. You get your Java E application put inside the container. Uh, you get your PHP application put inside the container. You get your Ruby application put inside the container. You get your C handcrafted application put inside the container, right? You get the craziness that Ian is doing with Nashhorn and, and JavaScript, and you mix all of that and you put inside the container, right? Have you ever tried to install Node, right? It's like a lot of things, right? So, you know, you put all of this stuff inside the container and you give the production guy a container, right? So what, the, what does he do? He gets your Java container, uh, put, uh, he knows how to run, how to start, how to stop, how to move your container around. He knows how to back up your container. He knows how to put load balance in your container. He knows how to get your container from your, your laptop, move to your test server, from your test server to your production server, from your production server to your cloud provider. Oh, you want to run in more than one cloud provider? Let's put my container in multiple cloud providers. You see where I'm going with this, Brian? Multiple cloud providers, right? You see where I'm going with this, right? <laughs> okay, so yes, he, he needs to prepare his part, right? <laughs> he, he, yeah, he had no idea what I was going to talk about. Now he knows. Okay, right? So you know, so now you can get all of these. You know, you can you can have your container, you can have your application, and you can really streamline the whole process of getting your application running on multiple places, right? And your production guys, they know how to do all of these because containers are standardized. The biggest revolution, oh, containers exist for a long time. I think the first containers are uh, seven, 1970s, right? So they exist for a long time. But only recently that we agreed on the size of the box, right? We've all been doing containers, but like some, of, some were Tupperware containers, some were like really big wood boxes, we, we didn't have a, 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 a standard to it. Now, everyone in the industry has agreed to use Docker as the packaging, right? So now we know the size of the box. And so now we all understand not only the size, you know, the size, how the hooks get to it, you know, how, how they, sh they, they fit together one on top of the other. So we've, we've agreed to this with Docker. And so now we can finally start doing the same thing that happened after the Second World War. Uh, when the first ships with containers started, they would run, you know, a few hundred containers, right? Today, the big, sh the big container ships, they carry 10,000 containers, 15,000 containers, right? And, you know, they grew a lot during those years. Same thing that's going on right now. The, the, the first container platforms are just out, you know, uh, Amazon Container service about a year old. Google container service about a year old. Uh, Microsoft's container service even less than that, it's like a few months old. You know, Oracle has just acquired several container companies, 
right? So they're all just starting to run containers. That means if you, right now, so containers will be a revolution on how we develop and ship software. We'll completely change a lot of things that we're talking about. So we're talking about microservices, we're talking about Java EE, we're talking about all this stuff. All of these will, will completely change the way we develop software because we're running top of containers. So, uh, and if you're ready right now, if you understand right now how to use containers, then you are ahead of the pack, right? You're going to be prepared for this future that's going to be this year, right? I've been, I've been saying that for, you know, for the last year, I've been saying the next couple of years, so, so you're halfway through it, right? So through this year, we're going to have a bit, you know, more, more and more things going to be shipped uh, using containers. So it's extremely important that we do this. And so I'm going to show you a little bit. How many of you guys here are running Java E here? How many of you know how to run a Java application? All right, most people. Okay, so we're, we're going to show you how, to, how you can run containers uh, using Java E, and but that's true for anything you're doing right now. And so uh, you can you can that that can jumpstart your process. But but the truth is, containers is the right abstraction between developers and operations, right? So if you're doing containers, there's no reason that developers are the operations' biggest enemy. Right? There's no reason for that because now we have a clear interface. We can pack our stuff into containers so we can innovate as much as we want and we just deliver to the to production guys the container. Uh, the issue is what happens if you show up with a big container, right? You know, this, how, how long are those things? Like 30 foot? Right? They're, they're very long, right? You know, if you, if you show up with one of those huge metal containers, on an, a port that has no container cranes. What do you do with it? Right? It goes crazy, right? You know, are you going to carry this whole thing? Are you going to just shove it inside a, a ship that's not prepared for it? That is the biggest problem. You know, it doesn't, ma it doesn't matter if you developer, you are using containers and you are kind of packing your stuff in containers. If your production guys, if they don't have the tools to run the containers, what are they going to say? I'm not going to run this stuff here, right? I have no idea how to run this thing. I have no idea how to manage this thing. Oh, you, you, mean, you mean that instead of one server, I'm going to have dozens of servers? I can't do this, right? So this whole process is going on right now. This whole, the tools, the, the, uh, we call the orchestration tools. You know, all the orchestration tools are coming on right now. So that's the thing. So in terms of Java EE, um, I'm, I'm going to go really quick here on this, on this discussion, but if you come to this URL here, jav.mn slash dockerje, there is a, an article that goes into very, in a lot of details, and you can actually run all of these uh, on your computer. So everything I can do here, is, it just requires you uh, a, a three, four commands, and you can run all of these here in, uh, in your computer. Uh, yourself, right? So let's just kind of take a look here how we can do these things, right? So we all know, we talk a little bit about containers. We all know that Java EE is a server that has a notion of containers, right? You know, you have a lot of containers, web containers, AJB containers. Um, and basically what we use this for is that once you package our application in a special way, it can run in multiple application servers, right? Uh, oh, I'd like to say one thing. Here, here Brian, Brian was going to remember that. You know, J2EE, I'm an old guy, right? So I kind of, you know, if I, if I put this here on, on, on Oracle, they're going to say, that's not, not, not J2EE anymore. It's Java EE now, right? The thing is, everyone asks me, did Oracle do good things for Java? And the answer is yes. Oracle did amazing things for Java. Open JDK is much better now than it was in, than, than it was in Sun's time. Um, the Java community has a lot of very cool things that didn't exist on Sun's time. Um, so Oracle puts more people to solve security things, put more people to develop Java. So Java is a lot better than it was on Sun's time, right, in a lot of ways. In one way, it's not. So this was the diagram that Sun had about Java E. This is the diagram that Oracle has about Java E. Pretty boring, isn't it? I mean, like, yeah, he's like, that's okay, right? He's been in Oracle for five years. You know? He looks at it, that's fine, right? You know, 
I kind of prefer the fun one, right? This is much better, right? This is more colorful. We know, know about. So I keep, I keep still using the J Chu E. You, you see, nothing changes. It. It's just the colors, right? And the database now looks like Oracle building. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, so that you have all these containers here. And because you put application inside a container, you have a special way to package your application. You know, you now can run your application in all kinds of different application servers. That's very good. It's very positive news for us. We can move our application from one uh, container, one application server to the next. That's, that's amazing. Works very well. But how about installation application server itself? You know, if you want to move from, you want to still use the same application server, but you want to move from your laptop to the server in your company, or you want to move to the server in your company to the cloud server, what do you do? You have to reinstall the whole thing again, right? You know, you have to reinstall the application server, you have to reinstall all the dependency, you have to reinstall the, 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 the operation system, you have to reconfigure everything. Not very portable, is it? It's portable between application servers, but your whole setup, it's not portable. So if you want to use the application server in a good way, how about if you package the application server inside a container? That's what Docker is for, right? We can package the whole application server inside another container, a Docker container. Uh, <laughs> I got a, there's a cool tweet the other day, and uh, a guy saying, my mom saw a Docker sticker on my laptop and freaked it out. So... Docker is not Blue Whale, okay? All right? Yeah, if you don't know what I'm talking about, yeah, forget it. Don't worry. Right? But um, uh, Docker is the packaging. The biggest innovation that Docker brought to us is the packaging. You know, Ian's like, well, you know, Docker has no innovation in Docker. Uh, he's telling me the other day. You know, it's all uh, uh, Linux containers, right? L L L C X, right? So how, how do you say L C L C group. Yeah, no, it's just C groups, right? In 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 Linux containers, right? Solaris zone. zone. Yeah, okay, yeah, I know. Solaris zones did a long time ago. Yeah. Yes, both things are true. The thing that it's not the, the thing that Oracle that Docker brought is not the tools, it's not easy commands. The thing that or, the Docker brought is the packaging. Now you can easily package a container and everyone agrees that the package of, of Docker is a good thing. So when, um, uh, you know, when Amazon, Oracle, Jelastic, and all the providers adopt that same packaging, it means that your container becomes portable between providers. So that's a very, very cool thing. Um, I know you want to say something. Not now. Later. All right. So, so Docker is the packaging of the container that you can use, right? So how, how, does, it, how does it work, right? So you know how, you, how when you package an, a Java EE application, you put inside what? A year or a? A war, right? A year or a war, depending on how complex things you're doing. So let's do a simple one. Let's get to my war, right? So I have my application dot war. I'm just gonna put it right here, right? So um, I have my, 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 my war packaging. I'm just gonna pass it as a parameter so I don't have to change my script every time I change my application, right? I change, change the name of my application. Um, so you can just pass your, the name of your war as a parameter. So everything you do, you do in Java EE works nicely. You know, you just package your application, you're fine. Um, you can use Maven. Someone is telling me I'm using Maven, right? You can use Maven to create your war file, for example. Um, so then, I'm going to run a command, docker build. Docker build builds a container. See the packaging? Builds the packaging of the container. I'm going to put my application inside the, pa the packaging. And I'm going to give a name to it so I can reference it later. Okay? So basically, I'm here. I'm creating a container. So next thing I need to do is this. Anyone notice what changed? Here to here. Nothing changed? Yes, it did. This little dot in the end, right? This is just saying, I want to build that container on this directory I'm right now. And on this directory, I have this file, the Docker file. The Docker file is the instructions on how I build my container, right? So, you know, it has things like, oh, it starts from a Tommy EE uh, pre-existing image. We're going to talk about this in a minute. Add some configuration for, for high availability. 
add some configuration for users, right? So I'm just kind of hard coding everything here just to make it easy. Uh, so, so as a, again, a lot of things are hard coded because you can run this in your laptop, right? So you know, you go, you go to the article. Uh, there's a GitHub account there. You download from the GitHub. You just run the whole thing in your laptop. Uh, so we add some configuration for for data sources. We add the the driver for Postgre, so you can access Postgre. So you see in the container. I have everything I need to run my application, right? So I have all the libraries I need. I have all the configurations I need. I have everything I need to run my application inside the container. And then the last thing here, I add the WAR file. And look, I install the WAR file in the web apps directory of Tommy E. For Tommy E, this means that I'm installing the, the, Java, the, 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 the Java E application. If it was another application server, you might have to do something different to install the application. But notice that my container will have the application installed, ready to run. When you add your application to the container, that's an image, right? Remember when you created uh, virtual images in the cloud, that what you would do? You would kind of create like a base image, a base install. And then every time you change application, you just upload the WAR file to the, to, the, to, the, to the machine. With containers, we could do this with virtual machine too, but with containers, we can do a very cool thing that is we can create appliances. An appliance is a ready-to-run image with everything that I need pre-configured, ready to run. So I have the latest version of my application right here installed, ready to run. What happens if I need to upgrade an application? I create a new version of the container, just up, just in start a new version of my container. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna do this really quick. Then uh, you know I'm gonna start a container here. Docker creates, create, create, create. I'm creating three containers, different ports, right? Based on the same image, Tommy UR, the same configuration. I'm creating a cluster here, and then I'm gonna add a load balancer. This load balancer here is a, is a, a, another container. I just download from the internet. I don't need to do anything right now. So, you know, I have some configurations for it, but that's okay, right? So with this, I have four machines, a load balancer, three application servers running on a high, high availability solution with four commands on my computer. That's it. You can run your laptop, this, the whole thing. And, of course, I'm doing here Docker creates, so it just creates the containers when I, I can start it with Docker start. Or I can do something easier. I can just run two commands in one, I can just use docker run, and I'm just going to run those commands right there. Okay? Uh, so, uh, with this, four commands, I have this whole environment. I have a load balancer, three Tommy E servers up and running on my laptop. What can I do with this? Well, you can get now the same, the same four commands you can run in your test server. And you have your test environment. The same four commands you can run your production servers. Now you have a production environment. The exact same containers you can run anywhere. If tomorrow you want to experiment with Jelastic, right? Jelastic right here, you can just run the same four commands on Jelastic platform and you have a, your, 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 your containers run in the cloud. If you want to do Oracle, you can do the same thing, right? You can just run the four commands on an Oracle machine in Oracle Cloud and you're going to have all this environment running on, on another provider. Right? So very easy for you to migrate things from one place to the next. Uh, it's very easy for you to test your environments. No, no, no more of those things. Oh, you know, I, my test environment is completely different from my production environment because they are different things. With containers, you have very similar uh, environments on both sides. And the interesting thing is that a Docker allows us to do something more interesting. There is, there is a, a, a load of pre-existing containers in the internet that you can just download and use it immediately, right? So, for example, you know, all these sea of containers, there, there's, there's a huge repository of containers with lots and lots and lots of pre-existing containers, and I can just go and say, oh, let me, let me find a Tom EE server, and I also need a Postgre database, I also need a ActiveMEQ uh, messaging service, I just kind of use them, and I also need a Cassandra service. You know, Otavio right, is, right is right there, and so uh, we can use Cassandra. And I can uh, just like connect my Tommy E server to all of those guys, and I have a very sophisticated environment. I can just add a load balance on top of this, and now I have 
a sophisticated architecture without configuring anything, just reusing existing containers uh, that you can download from the internet and actually don't even need to download them. Just by passing Docker to Docker a name of the thing you're using, Docker will automatically download, install locally, and run for you. Right? So it's a lot easier for you to build a very sophisticated architecture. Uh, it's a lot easier for you to automate your own work. You know, remember when you said that a lot of people don't automate their own work? A lot easier for us to automate our own work. All right? So the cool thing, I've mentioned this a few times, but all of those providers here, you know, and including Oracle and Gelastic, the two, the two guys that are, that are sponsoring us here in our tour, those guys here, all of them, they run containers. They all understand Docker containers. They all run Docker containers. So you can actually have all of the stuff running on any provider. And the cool thing is, you know the, the, the things that we can do right now? Uh, so from all of those providers here, uh, Gelastic, is, they've been doing containers for, for longer than most. And one cool thing that, that we can do, and, and those guys, and, and all of them we do eventually, is that we can actually migrate from cloud vendors. Right? Today, uh, we're going to do this after we finish the tour. We're going to host a, a series of webinars online that we're going to invite uh, people that could not come here uh, to the tour to come talk to you guys about cool things. So we're going to do a demo of running a container, uh, running a... a What's the name of that, that? That's Minecraft. Run a Minecraft server, and we're going to migrate the container from, from Minecraft from one cloud provider to another cloud provider without downtime. You, you're going to be playing. You can do this. You can be in your computer playing Minecraft with us, and we're going to migrate the server from one cloud to another cloud, and you're just going to continue to play right through it. We can do this today. He's like, oh, man, that's not possible. What? You want to do it? Yes. But you thought, you think that's not possible. No, you think that's possible, right? Yes, it's possible, right? Containers allow us to package things in a way that we can, we have the tools today to do this kind of things, right? That in the past could sound like crazy, but now we can actually have multiple cloud providers guaranteeing high availability between providers and even m live migration of containers to different providers. So we're going to do all those kind of things, right? So Brian, do you want to come here with me and say, and, and how about you, you, you connect your computer and then we can do, we can do uh, those two things. Do you want me to do mine first and you do, for, no, you do your first. Then, then. All right, you, you do it first. Right, so, so containers really allow us to do uh, some very sophisticated things and uh, uh, that's, that's in, it's extremely important that you learn how to do containers now, right? Because the sooner you learn how to do containers, you know, all those guys that raise their hand and say, I'm looking for a job, right? The sooner you know that stuff, the sooner you're playing with in your laptop. You know, you know how, how things was in the past? Yeah, okay. In the past was like, when I, when I was the age of you guys, especially, I'm, you know, I think you're the youngest here. I'm just going to pick on you right now, right? <laughs> so, you know, when I was your age, uh, I was, I would see those vendors coming in and they would say, oh, you know, you can use this, this very sophisticated piece of software here, this, this object-oriented application server. Yes, there exists something like this, right? And uh, very cool. Uh, and then you say, oh, wait, how, how can I do this? Well, it costs $30,000 a license per developer. And so I would, I would sit down in my chair like, okay, I'm never going to learn this. You know, I need to work for a company that's willing to pay a product that costs $30,000 for me to play with it. I'm not going to have that. The cool thing about today is everything we're talking here, you know, from what Ian said, what Otavio said, what I said, all of those things are completely free and available for you right now, right? So you can right now from your laptop just do all of these.